Hello, I'm Ros Dreyer and I'm again with Shelley Davenport who is the principal and main interior designer of The Open Door. We put together our little afternoon chats on Wednesday and thank you for joining us again today. We're actually going to talk about paint drying. No, don't worry, it isn't really. We're going to talk about the history and some other issues about paint. So I have some questions for Shelley and my first one is, Shelley, how did we get where we are with painting? Tell me about it, the history. Thanks, Roz. It's a long history, um, so I'm going to make this a little bit shorter than I normally would because we all don't want to hear about how paint dries. <laughs> it does go back to actually to the Egyptians um, 40,000 years ago, and they used obviously what they had, which was natural materials from the earth. Um, unfortunately, probably some byproducts of the animals, which obviously we won't discuss today, but um, through the course of time, and Egyptians were the very first to adopt all the different types of materials that they could use for paint. But fast forward, and we wanted to, there's a long history here, but we really kind of wanted to jump into North America. So Roz, who do you think is the first company in North America that developed paint? So I'm being biased here. I'm going to say Benjamin Moore because it's a British name and just think it's that old, maybe it came from a Brit. Well, you're very close. So Benjamin Moore was actually the second company uh. <laughs> that was introduced in the 1880s. Um, but in 1860, actually Sherwin Williams was formed by three different men as the first company that put together paint. Oh. So Benjamin Moore actually perfected color matching and also um, produced a wider variety of colors. Mm -hmm. And then of course, as you know today, um, in 1982, they actually invented the application where you can take in a, either a paint chip or sample. And now, of course, it's all digital. You know, you can do that via digital. Um, but this was where you could bring in a paint chip from any color or even from your wall and they could color bench it. So Benjamin Moore was the first company to actually perfect that. Oh, so half got it right. <laughs> yes. So tell me more. I mean, how did we come up with this and did they back in the day do like gloss, semi-gloss and matte or all the gazillion different finishes there are? Well, um, yes and no. So they started obviously with whatever they could produce mm -hmm. and as the materials became more readily available, oils and other products that they mixed in, that's where we've gotten to the finishes and all the different sheens and the options. So they certainly started off with a lot less options and a lot less colors than we have today because today as you know we can get any color yes um, and we can match any color and then of course any of the companies today can also color mix so they can also do a custom color as well which gives you a lot of different options for your home i agree i love paint so tell me more about paint where should i use what colors and what side of the room assuming we go back to the world of colors instead of all our neutral colors we're at now <laughs> yeah so i have lots of favorites um every designer has their go-to's you know in terms of brands i love benjamin moore sherwin williams Farrow and ball there are many there are many many brands out there those are three really good ones um and they're really kind of my go-to's when i take on a design project so, but what about colors? Oh, well. Of rooms, because I know that can be a little. Right, so I have some basic really go-to colors that I use, um, depending upon the brand. Mm -hmm. My favorite trim color is Decorator's White from Benjamin Moore. I do a lot of classic homes working in Northern Virginia, but I also love modern too. So if I'm doing an all white space, I love Alabaster from Sherman Williams. That's another really go-to. And uh, have a couple of really good favorite grazy colors, which are still popular today. Um, Revere Pewter is probably one of my classic Benjamin Moore colors that I love to use too. Okay, but get more specific. I'm talking about sort of 
is it a good idea if I paint my, I like the old fashioned red dining rooms, but I've always heard like green isn't really good in there, particularly the darker greens and, you know, some other rooms you shouldn't paint different colors. What are these old wives tales, which probably still exist because they're probably a certain amount of truth in them. Okay, so this is a good designer <laughs> secret. So the biggest one is yellow. So there is a very long history of yellow. Um, yellow really should not be used in a baby's nursery. There is a history that babies cry more in a yellow nursery. Hmm. Also yellow in a kitchen is also not a great color to use. There's a lot of history that proves that couples argue more <laughs> in a yellow room. I can't imagine that. Right. So these really haven't been go-to colors, I think, for quite some time. Yellow is really best used as an accent color mm -hmm. and not as a primary. I can see that. So what else can you tell us about paint? Well, I think the biggest impact, if you're not changing a whole massive amount of decor in the room, or maybe you're just doing little bits and you're doing a refresh. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest impact is painting the ceiling. Right. And in a different color is gives it a huge contrast, really makes the biggest statement in a room. I agree. But from a real, real estate perspective, I want white when I'm selling your house. <laughs> right. We'll talk about that in another episode yeah. for sure. But, no, I, I love, personally, I love it, particularly if they're metallic ce uh, ceilings, they tend to reflect light and bring a lot of depth and light to the room at the same time. Oh, I definitely love a metallic ceiling or a high gloss ceiling. Yes. In the right environment. And with a good light as well, it looks excellent. Always. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. We always enjoy you telling us about your little trade secrets. There won't be many left by the time we've finished. <laughs> so next week, we actually have something quite fun for you. It's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be about champagne or I have some incredible treats that you don't know about that we can put in our garden for us to actually enjoy at home and your whole family. So look out for either of those next week. Thank you again for joining us. Good to see you again, Charles. Thanks, Roz. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone.